you're an entrepreneur and trying to figure out ways to lessen that $500,000 tax burden. Alternatively, you're new to entrepreneurship and want to learn about really ways to mitigate taxes when you get to that point down the road. Either way, this video is going to help you immensely. Hey there, my name is Kenner French. I'm with VastSolutionsGroup.com. We do tax, finance, and AI to help lower the tax liability for the entrepreneur while hopefully increasing retirement income as well. Yep, today we're going to go over nine essential tax items for the entrepreneur. Let's get right to it. Number one, little known tax secrets for entrepreneurs. Number two, really what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Uh, number three, minimizing the tax burden for an entrepreneur. Four, deductions for the entrepreneur. Number five, home office tax deductions. Number six, tax deductible home office expenses. Number seven, travel expenses, then health insurance premiums. And finally, number nine, how to minimize or maximize your tax deductions. Very important. Whether you're hoping to start a fully fledged business or start a side business to bring in more money while keeping your day job, taking a turn for self-employment opens financial opportunities that aren't available really to most people. If in the if the fear of being eaten by the self-employment taxes is stopping you from you know turning your pipe dream into reality, the information in this uh, video it's going to change your view. You, you'll see, maybe even hopefully your life. Uh, once you discover the tax benefits that are available to the entrepreneurs, you will fear your their scurry away. Your vision of starting your own business will become a reality, and you'll know as a business owner if you've been one that it all makes sense. Taxes, after all, are dues that we pay for the privilege of membership in an organized society, says Franklin D. Roosevelt. What it takes to be an entrepreneur, to become self-employed, you must really have something to sell that will help you turn a profit, whether it's a, a product or a service or a physical or maybe digital or online, offline, doesn't matter. Becoming an entrepreneur requires you to offer something of value to your clients and also your customers. You can also start a lucrative business by putting up a, an online blog as an example. Monetization methods include selling advertising space, selling your own uh, products, building a list of targeted newsletter subscribers, uh, who buy further products you know, from you, uh, many other ways. However, before deciding to become an entrepreneur or self-employed, it's best to discern whether or not self-employment is really indeed the right thing for you. We're gonna go over some three not so fun facts about being self-employed, although generally there are many positive views this list to help you decide whether you're willing and able to maneuver these situations. Number one, long hours and little money for the most part at first. The first few months of your entrepreneurship uh, journey will require you to put in a heck of a lot of time for really very little money. This sometimes can be a deterrent if you plan to profit immediately. Uh, also, maintaining a full-time job in addition to your self-employment uh, can really prove to be both a benefit and detriment to your new business. It's beneficial because you really have a steady stream of income coming in regardless of your state of your business. Nevertheless, maintaining a full-time job requires you to work 40 hours a week there. And, you know, therefore, the startup stage will take longer because you're working at both places, at least for the short time. Well, while it's true that your first few months or maybe years of self-employment may produce little revenue, may, by the way, if you're committed to working diligently, your business is probably going to succeed. In addition to stamina, solid business plan, marketing plan, and business idea, really necessary components of opening a business. So take the time and plan very, very well. Number two, one-man show or one-person show. Unless you're willing to shell out the cash to hire administrative staff, you're going to be a one-person show. This means you'll have to handle the production of the items, fulfillment of services, customer service, bookkeeping, collections, and marketing, everything. Uh, also, you can utilize online services to help you minimize your time investment. Some services are paid while others are free. However, shelling out $20, let's say, a month here and there you know, can help you regain valuable time in your schedule so you can place that towards, let's just say, marketing your family. Number three, stressful times in business, there will always be surprises. You may have to deal with return orders due to unsatisfied clients. You may have to deal with shoddy suppliers, shipping emergencies, or even you know clients that refuse to pay, which is a bummer. Hmm. Now, if you can eloquently get through these stressful times, your business will be able to prosper even though leaner times, or even through leaner times, I should say. The way you address the needs of an unsatisfied client 
can be the determining factor as to whether they decide to do business with you in the long term. Many times, you know, if, if you can turn an unsatisfied client into a happy camper, you've won yourself a lifelong client. Now let's talk about minimizing the burden. As a solopreneur, your time is the most valuable asset you have. One of the main priorities should be to seek strategies to streamline your business in order to free up your major asset. Again, time. Generally, most established businesses hire employees or contractors to streamline the inner functions of their business. However, rather than hiring others, you can rely on the next really best thing, inexpensive software and services. These costs are also tax deductible. Again, tax deductible. To save time and money, try these useful online services for budding entrepreneurs. FreshBooks, freshbooks.com. It's a, an accounting and invoicing program which allows you to track your time spent on any specific given project, create professional invoices, and act as a virtual accounting interface per se. FreshBooks is four pricing plans that we've looked into for our entrepreneur clients. You can get an account for free if you plan to invoice three clients or less per month. Their paid memberships start right now at $20, to $20, $20 for 25 clients and $30 for unlimited uh, clients. Uh, number two, email marketing. Aweber.com uh, allows you to create stylish templates which include your letterhead for email marketing campaigns for your customers or newsletter subscribers. Pr pricing starts now at $19 per month for up to 500 subscribers. Facebook advertising nowadays, just about every person or every entity has a Facebook page. Therefore, it only makes sense to capitalize on this addictive uh, process that we call Facebook. By using Facebook advertising, you can target your advertising and set a daily budget. For example, if you'd like to spend, let's say, $300 per month, set a daily budget of whatever, $10. Set it to whichever amount you feel comfortable with. Facebook advertising can be very targeted based on age, location, interest, a whole bunch of other stuff. Ensure you understand your target market so you can tailor your ads specifically to them. Time to talk about deductions for the entrepreneurs is what everyone's talking about. Everyone knows that you can deduct the dollar spent, or I hope everyone knows, uh, the dollar spent on advertising the cost of materials for your business. However, few people know about the tax deductions that are designated for the entrepreneur or self-employed. These deductions can turn a portion of your normal everyday expenses like your, let's say your rent or mortgage for your home into a tax deduction. You can deduct a portion of your electric bill, major repairs to your home as an example, uh, maybe like a new roof or home services like security and even pest control. Yep, 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 you can. You can even deduct your kid's allowance. In addition, you can turn your hobby or entertainment expenses into a business tax deduction with little know-how. Let's get into it. Home office tax deductions. As a self-employed person, you're entitled to take a home office deduction for the workspace you use within your home. However, your home office area needs to be designated specifically for work-related use and work-related use only. For example, if you utilize your dining room table as your home office, then feed your family, let's say dinner on that same table, you're not entitled to the home office deduction for that specific space. If you've placed your home office in a spare room or a dedicated space, the IRS deems this as an appropriate workspace to qualify for the deduction. While having, <clears throat> excuse me, while having a home office deduction can be a godsend, it can also require more accurate calculations. In order to take the deduction ethically, you need to measure the space or the square footage of your home office and then compare that to the square footage of your home in general. If your home office space takes up 10% of your home, you're entitled to writing off what? 10% of your mortgage or your rent payment. If it's, let's say, 5%, you take a 5% deduction. In addition to this deduction, you can also write off the same portion of your utility bills and any maintenance, repair, or service bills that concern your office. For instance, if the home office, uh, if the, uh, the home's air conditioner breaks down, it costs, let's say, $5,000, it can be deducted. Well, you can de deduct that designated portion for your office. If your office space is 10% of your home, you can deduct $500 of that $5,000 uh, repair from your income. The same goes for things like a new roof, 
flooring, carpeting, and monthly services like security and pest control, your office's designated portion of these charges can also be deducted from your income. An easy way to track all of this is to use the service, let's just say, of an accountant. Uh, just give he or she the measurement of your home office space, the total square footage of your home, and your monthly paid bills, including repair and maintenance expenses for your home. Now let's talk about tax deductible home office expenses. And in, in, now, in addition to receiving a tax deduction for the portion of your home expenses that applies to your specific home, these expenses for your home office are also deductible. Let's go over those specifically. Number one, your phone, people forget this. In order to write off your phone expenses, you need to separate your home line from your business line. If you're seeking, uh, let's say you have a landline, you know, you can score a deal for whatever, about $30 a month nowadays. However, you can also get a second line for your cell phone in order to offer more flexibility as when and where you take your business calls. Now, an affordable alternative to a landline phone would be, let's say, Magic Jack. It costs about $40 for the initial purchase of the device, and the recurring costs are about $20 a year thereafter, or around there. Magic Jack, uh, it operates on a VoIP, you know, voice over internet protocol, therefore you need to plug it into a computer in order to turn on the reception for your phone. That's also a deduction on computer. If you need more mobility, most cell phone companies allow you to add an additional line to your account for as little as, believe it or not, just $10, and you can share the uh, minutes given your primary uh, phone line. The internet. Whether you work strictly from your home or work on your business from home during your spare time, it's unlikely that 100% of your internet use is strictly for work, probably at least, although you never know. Therefore, you won't be able to deduct your total internet bill in its entirety. Okay? Now, let's talk about deducting internet charges according to the percentage of the usage that is de dedicated to your business use. Yes, you can do that. Home office furniture and equipment. People love this. You can also take deductions for your home office furniture and equipment designated for business use. Desks, chairs, furniture, etc. Filing cabinets, computers, laptops, printers, fax machines. Also, let's remember, apps and software. Okay? So about maintenance and repairs, any maintenance, as I mentioned, and repairs strictly for your home office, such as new carpet, paint, um, whatever the case is, it's 100% deductible for your business. Your child's allowance, people forget this, pay your children for keeping the home office tidy. Even a small child can dust the desk and, and the computer. It encourages responsibility in your children and you get a ding ding tax deduction for when you pay them. Let older children help you keep files, folders, uh, receipts, etc. organized. They can even enter your daily income and expenses into your bookkeeping software, again, deductible. If your child is under 17, you can employ, employ, excuse me, employ them uh, without paying Social Security on their wages. Albert Einstein, pretty smart dude, says, the hardest thing in the world, and I quote, to understand is the income tax. Yep, he's right. Travel expenses. When traveling for business-related expenses, the majority of your expenses are deductible. Costs ranging from your plane ticket, a portion of your meals, lodging, and even entertainment are, bing, bing, tax deductible. Take your tax deduction for these business-related expenses. Let's go over them. Transportation. The cost of your airfare, your train ticket, your bus ticket, or whatever means of transportation that's necessary in order to reach your destination is tax deductible. Even though you can fly first class, only purchase the class you can afford. Remember, you may be receiving a deduction for your for that expense, but you're still footing the bill yourself, still coming out of pocket. If traveling in your car, you can deduct the amount spent on gas or add the miles to your business mileage expense, either one. If traveling in a rental car, you can deduct the amount spent on the rental plus Yep, gas as well. Furthermore, the miles you drive within the city you're traveling to are also attributable to your tax deductible expenses. Lodging or sleeping, your hotel stays are deductible. However, this deduction only applies if you're traveling without your family generally, uh, as only then does it truly apply as business travel. Many hotels charge an additional fee for Wi-Fi connection. If you must access the internet for any business reason, you're entitled to you got it, deduct your fees for the Wi-Fi connectivity. 
Uh, let's talk about meals and entertainment. While your other expenses are 100% tax deductible, usually only 50% of your meals and entertainment expenses are deductible, usually. Uh, you can take your clients out for dinner and drinks for entertainment purposes, uh, you know, such as whatever, a golfing trip or maybe even to the opera, whatever the case is. Keep a business calendar with the names of the client and really the business that was discussed for your records for the most part. That's pretty important, by the way. Uh, if you must use the car in order to operate your business, even in, let's say, your own city, you can deduct that as a travel expense. Trips such as driving to meet clients, you know, tolls, picking up supplies, trips to the post office and ship orders to networking events, or they all classify as business use. A percentage of the maintenance expenses such as oil changes, tire rotations, uh, car insurance, uh, gas, it's all deductible. It's important to keep your receipts for your travel expenses or keep it on that all one business card. In doing so, you'll be able to verify your claims in the case of an audit. Flamboyant spending on business travel or driving your car excessive miles for business may trigger an audit, so be careful. Many people either misuse or outrightly uh, abuse the situation. Health insurance premiums. Employees pay heftily, if you will, for the privilege of health insurance. However, entrepreneurs gain the upper hand when it comes to the necessary expense. Health insurance premiums. Now, those entrepreneurs can deduct their insurance premiums generally, as those who are entrepreneurs have no way to insure themselves other than paying for it completely out of pocket. However, in order to qualify for this deduction, you really truly must not have access to other forms of health insurance, generally. You can call the office to talk about this. This means that if you're able to qualify for insurance under your spouse's employer, you don't qualify for this deduction. Another perk for already sweet deduction is that you can also deduct the premiums for your insuring your family. As Ronald Reagan says, the government's view of the economy can be summed up in a few short phrases. If it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. Now, maximizing your tax deductions as an entrepreneur with some creativity and business sense, you can find business reasons for many of the other expenses in your life. Now, including expenses for your hobbies and entertainment. And when the expense is for your business, it's deductible. Try these strategies to get really the most you can from your tax deductions. Number one, turn regular expenses into business expenses. To make virtually all your mileage tax deductible, perform a business activity every single time you drive your car. If driving to your regular job, make contacts or pass out business cards at places near your workplace, deductible. Schedule errands for your business whenever you're normally going to and remember to write down it on your business calendar. Not only will your business benefit from the extra promotion, but your car auto expense deduction will rise significantly. Turn fun expenses into business expenses. There are many ways you can turn your hobby or enjoyable expenses and acti uh, activities into legitimate deductible business expenses. Here we go. If you like to go out and eat at fine restaurants, let's just say, put up a food critic blog as an example or deduct your dining expenses as well as the transportation expenses to get to that restaurant. If you like to travel, start a travel blog on ways to save money traveling or provide destination details on the best places to visit, visit to each city. Deduct your travel expenses as a necessary part of your business. Your camera and your photography expenses also become deductible when they're used in your business. If you enjoy boating, fishing, golfing, hunting, opera, theater, or other activities, bring a client and you can deduct 50% of the expenses. Let's say arts and crafts are your deal, right? Sell some of your beautiful things and put them on eBay or Etsy or what the, whatever the case is and then deduct the money you spend on that craft as supplies for the business. In addition, your hobby space or workshop space can be included in your home office space. The key to making the expenses for your hobby or other enjoyable activities tax deductible is to find a way to make money from the activity. Do it legally, by the way. Then you can savor the profits and the tax deduction. Get an accountant. Your accountant can advise you on many tax deductions you may not otherwise know about and complete your tax forms, by the way, in the most beneficial way for your situation. Your accountant, especially if they're 
pretty darn experienced. They can be an EA, accountant, whatever the case is. Keeping your tax deductions within normal parameters for your specific business so that you don't potentially raise any red flags with the IRS for whatever, ex excessive expenses. They can also advise you on further tax saving strategies, including your business structure, your investments, and retirement accounts that are available to entrepreneurs and self-employed people. Accountants are well worth their fees. The additional tax savings you can acquire by using an accountant, an experienced accountant, are for, far more than what they charge for their advice. Plus, you can also deduct the fees that you pay that specific accountant. Uh, the tax deduction outlined here are the most common deductions uh, that you can take advantage of when you become an entrepreneur, when you become self-employed, by adding a business of your own to your repertoire. However, these deductions are just the beginning. Let's remember that. The current tax laws give you many, I mean many, opportunities to save money on your taxes when you're self-employed. You can take advantage of these favorable conditions to start that business that you've really always dreamed about or turn a hobby into a very lucrative business. You just never know, right? Even though it may be hard, uh, it's gonna be hard. I'll just say it's gonna be hard potentially. The benefits of getting to do what you've always wanted to do along with the tax deductions can make it possible for you to enjoy the lifestyle that you deserve. Remember, Kenner French of VastSolutionsGroup.com. If you have any questions, call us. 888-808-8278. Uh, and thank you very much for